even hear the word of the Lord today speak and lead and guide and direct us in this way. Uh, may you be blessed in the word of the Lord in hearing of it. Our reading from the book of Joshua. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites sent out from Shittim and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before but keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priest, take up the ark of the covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Spirit to the church in Philippi, as to us. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. Just as you have used us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as often as I have told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. So this morning we hear from the gospel of our Lord. In the gospel according to the apostle Luke, it's found in chapter 13, starting at verse 31. Well, at that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. And he replied, Go and tell that fox, I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow. And the third day, I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Friends, this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And we express that faith, confessing it today in the words of the Nicene Creed as we join our voices together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnated by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us.
be for us a blessing in your kingdom and the exciting future that you already are preparing for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated, my friends. This third Sunday of the month, we, um, we, we allow our, we want our uh, child care, uh, uh, children's church servant in, in Maddie to take a break, and we want our, our uh, nursery givers to also to take a break, so there's no uh, children's church this morning. That's why you have M&Ms for you in your, in your seats, right? Not just for the children. All right, so you've got a bag of M&Ms. Go ahead and, and pass them down. I hope you have enough M&M bags for everybody. I told the first service people to leave them for you on the second service, not, not eat all the M&Ms and take them back. So if, if, if you have extra bags, just hold them up and we can pass them back to those who don't have, uh, uh, don't have any bags, all right? All right. Well, if you have extra bags in your, in your pew row, you're, you're blessed. You get to enjoy a few more M&Ms, kind of like I did last night, putting these bags together. Yeah. The Lord is preparing for us an exciting future. We, we hear that today in his word. Jesus talking about, in the gospel, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, where they are and where he wants to take them, and that one day we'll be uh, welcomed into the Lord's presence and declare, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, uh, the future of our eternity. Paul, writing to the church in Philippi, was saying, you who are in Christ, your bodies will be raised to glorious resurrection one day. That's a, an exciting future that the Lord has prepared for us. And, and in the Old Testament reading of, of Joshua this morning, we're going to use that today as a springboard of where the Lord's taking us in an exciting future, even in these days right now. So how do you view this? How do you view the exciting future that the Lord is preparing for us? This is where the M&Ms come in, all right? Um, I'm going to do a little, ex little experiment with you. You see uh, three colors in there particularly, a uh, green and a red and a blue uh, M&M. There's three others in there that are keeping those other three companies. So don't, don't, uh, don't worry about the other three. But you see a blue, a red, and a green, all right? There's, there's ways for us to take a look at how we as people, people of faith, view God's activity and, and, and work in our lives. Some of us are analytical. We like to see order and, and, and steps of progress that lead somewhere. If you're that kind of person, what color do you think you would be? Green. Sorry, green. It doesn't matter. It could be any color, but green. Let's, just, let's put it as green, okay? You, you're, you green faith uh, setters look at something and go, wow, look at the God of order in this time of chaos. Look at how God is marking for us the paths of our direction. And you can see by, by faith being exercised, the hand of the Lord at work. Now, others of you view God's hand at work in more of a red kind of fashion. This is, this is more of how I see uh, life. And we, all, we all share in these colors together, but one of them is more prominent. You greens, you also have reds and blues in you, but you're just more green in prominence. I'm more red in prominence. I see things as this is the Lord's mission. And he's given us a call to get the good word of his salvation out to the whole world. We better not let anything stand in our way to accomplish that. And that's the joy of, of my expression as a pastor, as a, a man of God, seeking that, that, that relationship with Jesus Christ like you are, that the mission of our Lord is, is why we exist. And some of you who think and exercise in more blue colors of faith are kind of like the Apostle John. John wrote the gospel, he wrote the revelation that the Spirit inspired him, he had three letters in there, and John's focus is really spiritual in nature, taking us to some different views and perspectives of where the Holy Spirit wants us to see how he works. John was the one who had the conversation with Nicodemus. How must a person be born again? Well, the Spirit blows as the Spirit blows, introducing us to the very newness of being born again in the Holy Spirit. And so some of you exercise faith in that way of, of really wanting to seek and be in tune with where the Holy Spirit is, is, is taking us and, and leading you and, and how he's speaking. Now, we, we need all three of these perspectives. I need green and I need blue in my life because I'm predominantly red. If you're predominantly green, you need red and blue. If you're predominantly blue, you need red and green. And together we make up the body of Christ. Uh, like Paul was talking about, the body with many different parts 
and we all need each other as we move forward in this exciting future that God is preparing for us, that he's already working for us. And, and today, we come to the edge of a, of a place where he's brought us, uh, like in Joshua with the Israelites. He's bringing us to a place like a Jordan-esque kind of crossing. What do we do there? I'm going to be talking and sharing with you today three general ideas that unpack um, our momentum campaign for us. And it's, re it's reflected in these three phrases. Stepping out, crossing over, and building on. And all three of those phrases have at their core... God's leading, his guiding, and his blessing, and how we see each of these steps is going to be by how we see him working, red, blue, or greenish. All three are needed in all three of those steps, but we'll have a chance to be together then as together we step out, cross over, and build on. Let's go to Joshua chapter 1 and hear this. By the way, on the back side of your bulletin, there's an outline if you want to follow along, take some notes, please feel free to do that. Um, we'll be get moving on to five observations here in a minute. But Joshua chapter 3, verse 1. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and, uh, and went to the Jordan where uh, they camped before crossing over. Now, you can imagine what conversations were like around the campfires when they camped that night. The green thinkers of faith were saying, how are we going to get across the Jordan? We've got to build a bridge. We need to go in an orderly fashion, and then everybody will be safe getting across, right? That's how you greens think, or that's how I think you think you greens think, okay? The reds were saying, we just got to get across, because God told us to go there, and that's his mission for us, and we need to get there. He'll provide the way. And you blues are saying, you know, let's spend some quiet time and pray about this, and seek the Spirit. Maybe he'll provide an answer for us that we're not even thinking about. Oh, we need that. Need that perspective. You can imagine the conversations. Conversations that range, too, around, boy, we've been wandering in this desert for 40 years. And finally, it's time for us to take the next step that God is calling us to be about. They've lost all of the people in their tribes who said earlier, 40 years ago, nah, we can't go in that promised land. The people are too big. The cities are fortified. There's no way we'll be able to take it over. All those people are gone, and now they stand on the river's edge, and God is saying, it's time to step out. When they were there at the river's edge, it was harvest time, and the Jordan River is at flood stage at harvest time. So even as they're exercising their faith, blue, green, red, they're recognizing that their present situation is filled with a lot of uncertainty. How is God going to meet this challenge? Well, we go on. Verse 2. After three days, uh, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. They said, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, your God, and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. See, Stepping out. Moving out. And then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. God knows that. You've never been this way before. But he's prepared you for this moment, and he will get you across. But, but keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits. That's about a half a mile between yourselves and the ark. In other words, let God be God. Don't crowd him. <laughs> let him work. And you keep your distance away. And so the Israelites stepped out, and they did so in faith, like we're called to do. Stepping out in faith. Trusting the Lord has brought us here to this time, this moment, this place in our history. Not just 40 years of wandering. 240 years of purposeful ministry and mission in the, in the valley and around the world through this congregation. And he's brought us here to this point in time. Now to step out in faith and trust him and exercise the, the blues and the greens and the, the, and the reds among us so that he's glorified and honored and, and his exciting future is known among us. This is where we are right now. 
to step out in faith. Are we ready? Are, are you ready? We could ask ourselves, am I ready to follow the Lord? Are we ready to go to the other side? Am I ready, Lord, to be led by you to the other side? Are we ready, am I ready to go where the mission of the Lord is to be completed among us? Those are great faith questions for us to ask. For us to think about whether we're green or blue or red thinking or exercising of our faith. Are we ready? I would propose something for us today as we step out in faith that defines our stepping out. You're going to hear me as a red faith thinker in this next statement. But all of you can connect with this because all of us are red thinkers of faith exercisers of faith in some way. I would propose for us that as we step out in faith, this be one of the thoughts, the anchors for us. America is in need of Christ-centered, biblically relevant, spiritually dynamic churches. We, Bethany, we are saying that regardless of what any other congregation or denomination or Christian organization does, Bethany has driven a stake in the ground and will be an unstoppable force for the gospel. We are here to make an impact for the kingdom of Christ. What we are stepping out to do will enable us uh, to be an even greater force for the gospel of our You know what? Read this with me. Let's say this together. Let's drive that stake in the ground together. America is in need of Christ-centered, biblically relevant, spiritually dynamic churches. We are saying that regardless of what any other congregation, denomination, or Christian organization does, Bethany has driven a stake in the ground and will be an unstoppable force for the gospel. We are here to make an impact for the kingdom of Christ. What we are stepping out to do will enable us to be an even greater force for the gospel of our Lord. Amen. Friends, I look forward to the Lord building on that stake. Now, let me share with you from the Lord as he speaks to us this morning in Joshua some, some observations that we're going to be in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, experiencing and, and coming up against and, and facing together as we step out in faith. Observations. Observations that have to do with the Lord at work and working among us. Observation number one. The pathway to follow will be marked by our Lord. You green folks, you green faith expressors, this is where we need you to express your faith. This is the way the Lord has taken us. See, we can see it marked. He's not a God of chaos, but a God of order. And see how he's working? I need you, as a red expresser of faith, to be speaking on behalf of all of us who are God's people. You know that in these verses of, 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 um, of, jo of Joshua, chapters 3 through 5, there's a word that's used. It's the word in Hebrew called avar. A B in Hebrew is a V pronounced, so avar. And it's a, it talks about a crossing over kind of connotation or an aspect of crossing over. In, those, in these th uh, three chapters, chapter 3, 4, and 5 of Joshua, where the people are crossing over the Jordan River into the Promised Land, that word is used 21 times. God is making a point that as I am moving you across, as you are crossing over, as faith is being exercised, as I'm leading you in crossing over, you're doing it together as one. In unity. You're doing it together as a body. And this leads us to the second point of our momentum theme, and that is that we do. We cross over. We're exercising this blessing of the Lord in unity and as one. That we're doing it together and where the Lord has taken us. Some of you have built into your cars, into your dashboard, a GPS system, right? Newer cars have that. 
uh, I've got a GPS system on my phone, which you probably do too, and, and then maybe some of you have a GPS system that sits on your dashboard on a little clip, right? And, um, and you can punch in there where you want to go, and uh, it, it'll take you where you want to go. Now, ours is named Lola, so that when we want to scream at somebody, we scream at Lola. You're not taking us in the right direction, Lola! You know, and, and she says, recalculating, recal I don't want to go in that direction, Lola. So, I, so Sue knows I'm not talking to her, I'm talking to Lola. All of us as God's people have a GPS as well. It's called a God positioning system. Yeah, you have that in you as faith, and you exercise that in red, green, or blue. But we also have it among us, a God positioning system called his word. And the truth of that word keeps us positioned where he wants us to be positioned. During our gathering of our offerings, you're going to be given part of your God positioning system in the form of this journal. Remember last week how we talked about hearing from God and spending time as God's people, hearing from him, hearing him speak to us, responding back to him in prayer, that he would be leading us as his people by his word. Here's this God positioning system system for you to exercise during our momentum campaign in the front there are some uh, greetings from me and and helping us again to understand our mission and our goal and our history and who we are and our vision and strategic plan the immediate need there's a picture in here about a revised floor plan and external rendering of what the lord is we see the lord leading us to in in developing brick and mortar at our new building and then there's this part of it which is what I want to get to. It's your God positioning system. It's devotions for you. As you spend time in the Lord each week, there's one devotion per week. Spend as much time in that devotion every day, over and over again for a week if you would like. Do it one day, whatever. But as we spend time listening to God, he will position us where he needs us to go. So that together, as God's people, we cross over in unity. Observation number two. The territory to be conquered is known by God. Here's where you blue faith exercisers really shine. <laughs> you who exercise faith in the sense of a spirit of trust and knowing that God has already been where we need to go. Boy, I need you to speak those words of, of encouragement to me and among us. God already has been where he wants us to go. All it is is exercising faith to trust that he's going to take us to where he's already been. And we hear this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, uh, verse 27 to 29. That God purposely chose what the world considers nonsense in order to shame the wise. And he chose what the world considers weak in order to shame the powerful. God chose what the world looks down on and despises and thinks is nothing in order to destroy what the world thinks is important. This means that no one can boast in God's presence. And where else do we see that most beautifully exercised by our Heavenly Father, that in the work of His Son Jesus, on that instrument of death we know as a cross, that this shameful place for a person to die, a tree, out in public, shamed by those he came to save, denied by his own father. This place of shame, God raised up for us to be the place where we find our hope, our life, where we find our future, where we find an exciting future for us as God's people in eternity because now we live with sins forgiven and a hope that trusts in God that where he's been, he's taking us. He's been there already. I have nothing to fear, worry about, doubt. God is preparing the path for us. If he's done this with his own son for my salvation, how much more will he do this as he asks us to cross a Jordan-like boundary for you and me? Number three, observation number three. The challenges of progress are met by God. The challenges of progress... Not progress when it comes to what we know in our socioeconomic living as Americans in this country, technology, science, 
all those things that uh, are coming at us constantly as new inventions and new things. But, but, but progress in the sense of how and where the Lord wants us to go and, and at what pace. The challenges of progress are met by God. Let me share with you the word of the Lord as he meets this for you. Verse 13 of Joshua. As soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, they, as soon as they set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. Now, if you were a priest asked to carry the ark of the Lord, you're looking at that river. It's at flood stage. You can't see the bottom. It's muddy. It's dirty. The water's rushing by in mad torrents. And you know, carrying this several hundred pound instrument on your back, that as soon as you take a step into that river, you're dead. You're drowned. You're washed away. God somehow is going to need to meet this challenge so that we can progress ahead. Verse 14. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now, the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest, yet as soon as the priests who carried the Ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. God hadn't told them how he was going to provide meeting this challenge of progress. He just said, trust me, step out. We're going to cross over together in unity, and I'll provide the way across. And they did. And when the priest's feet hit the water, God stopped the water flowing. In fact, it says, it piled up in a heap a great distance away. They didn't get to see the working of the Lord immediately. At a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarethan, while the water flowing down to the Sea of the Arabah, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. God's exercising the blessings of his working among us so that as he's calling us and even challenging us to progress ahead, he's going to meet those needs. Well, friends, change is difficult. Perhaps to different degrees for each one of us, but it is difficult. But maintaining the status quo will eventually lead to stagnation and irrelevance. And you who are red like me, this is where your heart starts getting beating. I don't want to be stagnant as a child of God, much less as a pastor of a congregation. I don't want to be irrelevant in a community that needs to know Jesus Christ, much less a world that needs to know of his salvation. My red exercise of faith, the mission part of me, which is where all of us are part of, we all have red inside of us as People of faith says we want all people to come to a knowledge of salvation. We don't want to be stagnant or irrelevant. Lord, lead us forward. And you will provide as we face the challenges. We know that. We're going to trust you. Observation number four. The miracles to be accomplished will be fulfilled by God. The miracles that need to be accomplished or to be accomplished will be fulfilled by God. Here, what the Lord was telling Joshua and the people when he was saying to them, trust me, step out, let's cross over together. For the Lord your God, he's talking to them, he's, and the Lord is talking about himself. The Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. Remember that miracle. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful. Verse 24 there. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. Knowing that God, our, our Heavenly Father, in this fourth observation is going to accomplish that which is fulfilled by him for these miracles that are needed brings glory to him. It honors him. And it bear, we get to bear witness to the world of his working. In 2001, fall, September of 2001, you know what happened. The attacks of 
That fall, a congregation in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, began what we're in the midst of. They began a momentum campaign. And you know that in the fall of 2001, the economics of our country turned upside down. People were scared and frightened. It was not a time, or so people thought, to challenge the Lord, to step out in faith, to trust. It was a time to hunker down. It was a time to build a fortress around who we are and what we know. It was a time to live in fear, as people, so many people thought. But that congregation in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, set out on their momentum campaign amidst all of this that was going on in our country. People were telling them left and right, you're foolish. Who's going to provide for you? How are you going to meet these challenges? They had a goal of raising for the brick and mortar part of their capital campaign two million dollars that was their goal you're never going to reach that people said no way are people going to be able to accomplish you accomplish your goal for your congregation by the time it was all said and done before christmas of 2001 they had exceeded their goal by 10 percent 2.2 million dollars now who do you think was in charge of that who do you think provided that miracle it was the lord working among his people for the sake of his mission. Who do you think is going to accomplish it among us, in you? But your Lord God, the worker of miracles, the one who's seeking his name to be declared in the glory and wonder of your life and mine and this congregation. Come, let's cross over together and step out in faith but there's one more observation for us number five final one the blessings gained will be given by god the blessings that are gained are going to be given by god it reflects the fourth observation a little bit the blessings that we're going to be gaining as god's people aren't anything that we're going to be earning or deserving at all. In fact, at the end of this, we're going to be looking back and saying, Lord, how gracious you are, how good you are, how generous you are, how wonderful are your ways. All of these were given by you through us for your purposes. And that leads us to the third point then of our momentum campaign, that what we are as a people is building on, we're not building on a history. We're not building on the gifts of God's people here. We're not building on thoughts and plans of men. We're building on the blessings of our Lord known among us. Because how else are things going to be accomplished, right? Unless we build on him and on what he's providing for us. Friends, we do have an exciting future for us. Maybe these next few months are exciting for us. Maybe the next few years are exciting for us. Certainly, our eternity is exciting for us. But a reflection of that eternity is going to be made known among us now in the next few weeks and the months and the years ahead of us. As more and more people are connected to Jesus as Savior, as God's kingdom is grown among us for his glory, as his name is proclaimed, and Jesus' cross is lifted high. Come, together, friends. Let's step out in faith. Come, and let's cross over in unity Come, and let's build on what the Lord is giving to us, regardless of how you're thinking and the great ways that God has you thinking, that these things might be known among us as his people. In Jesus' name, come and let's pray together. Father in heaven, these are exciting times for us. You have an exciting future for us. We want to be a part of that in all that you, O Lord, have led us to be a part of so far. We stand at the Jordan's edge. We hear your call to step out in faith. We want to do this crossing over in in unity in you and to build then upon what you're doing among us, what you're providing, O Lord. Be glorified and honored. Let these truths that we see expressed as people of faith, red, blue, green, however, Lord, you've wired us to express that to be words of encouragement among ourselves and and for the, the work that you're doing among us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that the mission you've given us, sharing the life and love of Jesus Christ with all, might be known among us, connecting people to Jesus, that they would know their salvation as we do in Christ the Lord. 
in his almighty and powerful name. We step out, we cross over, we build on Jesus and him alone. Amen. May the peace of God, my friends, that passes our understanding, keep your hearts, our hearts and minds together in Christ the Lord as we go forward in him.